Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 49 of the Cherry Heart podcast. I'm Sandra and you can find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll pop the link down in the down bar. Um, You can also find me around the web as Cherry Heart and I'm Sandra Cherry HRT on Instagram. There is also a Ravelry group to accompany this podcast that's called Cherry Hearts Cozy Corner and you can find that on the groups tab on Ravelry. Um, so hello, welcome, welcome back if you are a lovely returning viewer, thanks for coming back and thanks for checking me out if you're new, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you'll want to, sub- you know, subscribe down there. Um, yeah, how have you been? Um, the whole end of school busyness is really ramping up for me. I think we've got about seven weekends on the trot where there's something going on and then bits dotted throughout the week as well. So it's all go, go, go at the minute. It's a bit full on. So I'm kind of, even though it's still June, I'm kind of looking forward to the school holidays already. <laughs> um. Oh, also I've got some podmin to do first. So podcasting administration so first thing I wanted to quickly mention and I hope you'll excuse me reading but I just made notes because I forget things um awesome granny bags by awesome granny she has a shop on Etsy um I'll pop the link in the show notes again but just to let you know I've got a discount code running in there at the moment it is uh 15% off if you quote cherry heart um, so that will be coming to an end soon as summer approaches so um, I think you can use it in June and I'm not sure after that so yeah if you haven't ordered one yet and you'd like to go and check it out and make use of that discount code then now is the time to pop over and do that. Um, I've also got the Cherry Heart Make Along running um, that's going on till the end of June so that's the one where we're making cherry heart patterns or a cherry heart tutorial um, so if you want to find out more about that I shall put pop all the links in the show note oh speaking is so difficult isn't it um, yes I shall pop all the links in the show notes basically everything's on Ravelry um, and there's a chatter thread so um, you can talk about what you're making etc and then I've just got two finished object threads so if you're making a pattern of mine that you have to pay for then that can go in the paid for thread if you want to use a free pattern or follow one of the three tutorials that's absolutely fine as well and that will go in the free FOs thread and I'll pull, pull prizes from each of those three threads three threads is not that easy to say um, yes, so lots of prizes to be won and thank you for using the hashtag Cherry Heart Mail. that's fabulous I've been uh, really enjoying seeing what you're all making and seeing your lovely versions of things and it's so inspiring actually because quite often when I make something I have certain colours in my head and it's I don't know, the whole colour and design thing kind of goes together for me I sort of see certain colours in oh that sort of gives me a certain idea but then when you guys make it and you make it in completely different colours that's like oh wow it's kind of out the box for me because I can't <laughs> you know once I've had a little sort of vision of one thing I like to see it like that and it's only afterwards that I can sort of entertain other ideas so yeah it's really nice to see your other ideas you put some lovely colours together it's fun right I'm gonna have to pause in my pod minion because I have a whining mat at the door I will just go and let him in. One second. Okay, whiny mutt wanted to come and say hello. There he is. All right. Now you've seen everyone. Um, I'm just going to check we've done the podmin that we needed to do. Need to bring the computer back to life. Come on. Um, yes. Yeah, so I think that's it for the podmin. So that's good. Are you going down now? Are you going to go and sit down? Go on then. Oh, and I thought I'd just say as well that I've uh, got a bit of vloggy footage that I've been taking, just dog walking around the field um, in the week, but now it's summery, it sort of looks a bit different up there. So I thought I'd just show you. Um, I'll stick that at the end, so you can ignore it if you want to, or check it out if you like. But yeah, I'll bang that in there as well. Um, 
I thought you were going to sit down. That is not sitting down, is it? Come on. Oh, pestilential hounds. I'm surprised we haven't got the cat up here as well because he's taken to coming and sitting up in the chair just opposite and I normally have the two of them with me lately. Which is quite nice, isn't it? A bit company. Um, right, so we've done the first bit. Let's move on now to... What do I do next? Normally things I've done, I think, don't I? Why is it so hard to retain this information? It's really not that difficult. Um, yeah, so things I have completed are some socks. Yes, we need some sock blockers, but I'm not using them all for other things. <clears throat> Put that on there a minute so it doesn't clatter. Small delay to proceedings. Hello, yes. You're very lovely. You do make life awkward though, but severely restricting. Well, that's given the game away, hasn't it? No more surprises there. Severely limiting my range of movement, you are. Right. Are we all sitting comfortably? Then I shall begin. So these are my, well, I don't know what they are really. Socks, obviously, but they're my grey mould socks. So this is, wow, look at that. The contrast is amazing on the screen. They're more subtle in real life, actually. It looks like it's black and white on the screen, but it's actually a grey. It is quite a charcoal grey, but it is grey nonetheless in real life. I'll pop a picture in the show notes and see if it makes it look more grey. Although I suppose with the zingy heels and toes, it kind of accentuates the contrast rather than anything. Um, anyway, yes, so I got this um, yarn from my Knit Crate box, this was from the May box, um, I've got a new one actually now, I need to go and get that don't I to show you, I think that's my only incoming goodie. Um, oh no I have got another, right anyway. Focus on the task at hand, which is these socks. So these are made with the Knit Crate yarn, as I said. So it's a grey mould yarn, um, which I really love. I know it's kind of dark and that's a bit off-putting for some folks. And some folks also didn't like how it's knitted up, apparently, because I like the kind of barber poly. And it looked like baker twi baker's twine before it was knit up. So obviously it gives you quite a sort of different effect. But I was actually looking for some mild yarn to make socks before, so I'm kind of quite chuffed with this. And I really like my zingy, zingy, contrasting um, colour heels and toes. I really like that. So I just did my little line at the top that I like. And this is kind of... Um, Apart from just wanting some socks in this yarn, this was kind of a little bit of preparation for my uh, pick and mix socks as well, the kind of choose your own adventure of socks where I'm going to put different options in for you to choose. But I wanted a short row heel. I'd made one before, but I wasn't 100% happy with it, so I tried out something else. I think the first one worked well in one colour. No, it, uh, did it work well in one colour? And then when I came to change colours it didn't work particularly well or it left big holes, which was okay because you can sew them up I suppose. It must have left holes in one colour. But anyway, this one seems to work much better in one colour or with changing colours. You don't get the sort of holes at the uh, corner there. So yeah, so I'm much happier with that. It does leave quite a sort of ridge. Which I wasn't sure about, but I think, you know, could be a feature element. I thought it was going to come out a smidge smoother than that, but I don't know. It's, it's okay. I quite like that. But I think it's definitely a better pattern overall, so I think that's probably what I shall go with 
in the pattern. I think truth be told I probably will continue to use Fish Lips Kiss Heel which I would heartily recommend to anyone but um, obviously I can't include that in my pattern because it's not mine so I needed something else and I've just done my uh, swirl toe which is another one will be in the pattern and this is just a variation this ribbon isn't actually in the pattern it's just a sort of different variation but I just wanted to do something so it wasn't just a vanilla sock yeah so those are finished they feel amazing they feel amazing on um, they weren't particularly fun to knit because obviously it is quite dull I've discovered that actually when you use pretty yarn you're actually quite often well I anyway I'm quite often sort of looking at the colours that what's that your stomach my word can you hear that um, I'm looking at the sort of colours of the speckles and sort of that actually brings quite a bit of enjoyment just throughout the knit whereas this where it's as much as I want the end result it was a bit of a dull knit because it's always the same throughout yeah but um, the cuff felt amazing it's got a little bit of um, it's not alpaca Peruvian highland wool in it and it just gives it a bit of sort of extra fluffiness but when I put them on oh my goodness they feel amazing on oh, so comfortable and oh it's like a little foot hug it was lovely so yes yeah, so I'm really pleased I did um I went on the crafty cruise with uh Sam just on a long boat down the river four hours just sitting in the boat having a little drink having a little chat it was fantastic and um so yeah, so I turned the heel and then I sort of powered down most of the foot while we were chatting on the uh, boat. So that I was quite incentivized to get the second one started and done then, because I was just starting to find it quite dull, but then I progressed nicely. It's one of those ones where you need to have something good to watch on telly while you're making it, just so you can just go onto autopilot and then not realize. Before you know where you are, you've done more than you think, so then it's not so bad. So that's the only downside to that yarn, in my opinion, is it's a bit sort of dull to knit with, in my personal opinion. Um, so that's the finished object. Oh, this is a finished object. Um, this is a sewing pattern um, given to me by the lovely Sonia, who is Fabric and Flowers. Um, that's her blog name. I'll just check which. Well, I'll put what she is on Instagram down here for you. Um, yeah, so she's come up with this pattern, and it's called a notebook buddy. And she asked me if I would like a copy to make and show you. So I rather thought I would. So here it is. I haven't put my little fastener on, so it's an almost finished object, I suppose. So the idea is, you've got your notebook. And obviously you're going to want a pen or something to write on your notebook. So you have this, stitch up this little pouch. And in here, you can just put a little pen or a pencil. It's got like a little, there's two, there's a divider. So you've got two little pouches. You can like put a credit card or something in there. There's two different sizes of pouch as well. Let's just put a pen in so we can see it in action. What I thought I actually might do is pop a little, oh look, that's so cute. Um, yeah, pop a little pen in and put like my crochet hook in and then this could be sort of quite good for when I'm sort of writing up little notes and things about patterns and whatnot. So I thought that'd be quite handy. Because also you know how the hook sort of disappears or I just sort of normally leap up from the sofa and just dump it on the side and then I'm always reaching down the sofa or trying to check if it's rolled underneath or something to find it again. So yeah. That would work rather well, I think. I could even put my little scissors in there as well, couldn't I? Just, just so I knew where they were quickly. Just to keep everything together while you're in the middle of something. Yeah. So I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. I did make a little mistake with my lining. That this bit, you can't see it luckily, this divider bit 
the pattern goes that way and this bit of the pattern goes that way because that's just what I had of that fabric and I thought it kind of worked well with these so I just went with it I think it's right because you can't really tell can you yeah so that pattern um, is available on her well I assume on her blog I'll check I shall put the links in the show notes but yeah it's the notebook buddy so there's two sizes and then of course you can just this strap has got elastic on the other side so you can just adjust it to fit whichever size notebook you've got. But yeah, I thought that was a nifty little idea. It's cool, isn't it? So that's the other thing that I've finished. Um, and then I've got something which is a sort of... Can I put your head down? Will you tolerate that? Um, which is a sort of in-between. I've done part of it. No, okay, you've got to have your head on. You're so awkward. Yes, you are. I'm not here just to be a dog pillow, you know. <laughs> That's my only function. I'm a dog pillow. Sorry, I'm just picking. I've got dog hairs on this, but how did you get your hairs on my embroidery? So this is um, sort of done in that I've finished the embroidery bit, but sort of not done because this fabric is going to be made into something yet. So here's my embroidery, which I actually finished last night. So that's quite exciting. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it for you. Is that coming up quite nicely? Yeah, look at that. Woo! So I'm, I'm still quite excited about the fact I can do embroidery that actually doesn't look hideous. That's still quite a revelation to me. So this um, design is it's not mine. <clears throat> um, I followed a design which was by And Other Adventures, um, so that's the website name, and she's always on, also on Instagram as And Other Adventures, um, and she does lovely flowery embroideries, but they're mostly based on hoops, and um, the idea being you stitch it up and you kind of leave it in the hoop. But I wanted to use this for something else. So she does kits where you get the uh, design and the flosses. I don't know if you get a hoop as well. I didn't look into that because I've got quite a few embroidery flosses. So I just wanted the design. So normally it's a little bit smaller like this and it fits. Let's put the hoop over. And it fits beautifully inside the hoop. I actually did do another one to go in the hoop actually because it's one of my favourites that I've seen. I'm following a few embroidery people now and she just does really beautiful things um yeah so i wanted this this is going to be another bag actually so i just wanted it to be a bit longer so i just duplicated some of the design elements again on the edges just to extend it out a bit so yeah i kind of the pattern um that i brought does sort of give you directions of what stitches to do where which I did sort of follow to some extent but then after a little while I kind of just went by the picture and sort of did what I thought looked about right and you know once I'd sort of done a few this was the patch I started on just here once I'd got that bit sort of going I kind of started to just go with the flow and do what I thought looked okay so I think it turned out all right quite happy with that. What are you doing? I've got Bert on the move now. Sniffing things. You can't really see him with this new camera scheme of mine. Can't see what you're up to, can they? Um, because I'm not being a pillow, he's become restless, haven't you? Yeah, so I'm going to turn this into one of my little bags. So that'll be the panel of the bag like so yeah so that was fun I really enjoyed doing that like I say once I'm always a bit tentative at first because um, I'm not sort of the best or most confident embroiderer but since I've done um, Chrissy's crafts I joined in with her good intentions so along um, and we made the good intentions hoops and she sort of did tutorials for each stage and that just helped massively because a she explained things sort of step by step and made it really easy to follow but 
she's just so relaxed about the way she sort of said, she said, oh, just do it like this, or do it like that, do it what works for you, or, you know, if it goes wrong, just snip it out, who cares? <laughs> so you sort of think, oh yeah, I will try things, yeah, it doesn't matter, you're right, it doesn't matter. That's for some reason I've got all uptight and... I've said this before, I'm just repeating myself, shut up, Sandra. Um, yeah, anyway. At first, with this one as well, I was quite tentative and looking at the instructions and making sure I was doing it all right. And then as it sort of started to, once I'd got a little bit on there, you sort of realise, oh no, you can kind of, you know, you kind of do what you want to a certain extent. And like Chrissy says, it's nature, you know, it doesn't fall into these rigid categories. It's sort of, it's flexible and it kind of does vary and... You know, it's not all perfectly aligned because nature isn't. So when you're doing flowers, you know, you can bear that in mind. So yeah, so that was fun to do. I enjoyed that. I'll have to find another little embroidery something to do, I think. Because I want to do... Um, what are you doing? Yes, I'm going to be a pillow again, shall I? Um, I wanted to do my letter, an S, with sort of some flower decorative things on. I have... I think I've saved some on Pinterest that I kept meaning to come back to and never did, so... Now that I'm feeling more confident, maybe I could do that. Um, so next we are looking at what I am doing now. So I've got one what I am doing now to show you. I think that's all there is. I'm feeling a bit all over the place today. So this is a blanket project. So I am using, are you going down now? Yeah, all right, go on then, off your pole. Right, um, so I am using this basket full of lovelies here, um, which is the Karen Simply Soft, um, that I got in America, not this time when I went this year, but I got it when I went to Florida a few years ago actually. And I've had it ever since, and I had a blanket in mind for it, um, and I was kind of put off a little bit, I don't know how this came up, maybe I was just looking on Ravelry, but just some of the comments about the yarn weren't all that great, they were sort of saying that it was quite slippery and the ends kind of worked their way out and, you know, some people seemed to love it and some people weren't so sure, so that kind of made me hesitate a little bit. But I've always wanted to use it because the colours I got. I really like. So uh, the other thing I've always been meaning to do, apart from using that blah, 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 apart from using that yarn up, is to make a sort of variation on the getting ziggy pattern and turn it into a rectangle. Because the getting ziggy is the zigzags on the side, I wanted to kind of turn it into um, a rectangle on the side so I can make it into a blanket. So. I thought I'd try it out and see if it worked. And it does. So here we are. As you can see, I haven't sewn in any ends yet. I know, scandalous in the extreme. But there's not gonna be, because this is a, well, worsted weight yarn, I guess. Um, there's not gonna be that many stripes, so I'm just gonna do it at the end. I don't care. I'm just gonna do it later. Yeah, that's how it is coming out. I've got coming up quite dark on the camera, this sort of tealy colour and the grey. It's looking quite dark here. But it's very hard to show blankets. I'm going to go back a bit. Oh, he wants to go out now. Constant work, you are. Do you hear me? There we go. I'll try to see through the blanket and see if I can... There you go, that kind of shows you it, doesn't it? So I'm almost done now. So I've started obviously, well, in this corner and been adding stripes. So I had the triangle, the corner triangle, and then I got the width I wanted. So this is going to be for my niece, so it's only for a single bed, so it's not massively wide because she's got a bed that has sides up because um, it's one of those sort of cabin beds. So it needs to fit within there, so I can't have any over the edge drapes, so it's a bit narrower than I might normally do. Um, so yeah, so I've got the sort of width I wanted, and then I've this is all the alongs, so I can get the length I wanted. 
and now I've just got to finish the last corner. That yellow and that teal looks horrendous on this camera. I'm hoping it'll be right in the final thing. It kind of looked right. I kind of laid the balls out to sort of try out stripes. We have a cat here now. Right, let's go and let them in and out and yep, one out, one in. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that will look all right uh, once I've got the next few colours on. Particularly want to rip it back, but, but I haven't put my ends in, so if I decide to, it won't be that big a deal, will it? Um, yes. So this blanket is for my niece, as I say, and um, it all started because she wanted a little crochet unicorn. And she kept asking me to make a little crochet unicorn, and I kept forgetting about it. And um, yeah, also the sort of amigurumi stuff sort of isn't really... I do make things occasionally, but it's not my sort of natural... Not something I'm naturally drawn to doing. Um, yeah, so I was a bit... I have to. <laughs> but bless her, she's not one to forget, so she would keep asking. So I was like, right, I'm going to have to get that done. So I made that. But before I made it, I was trying to sort of say, well, wouldn't you prefer, wouldn't you prefer something else, a little blanket? I like making blankets. So she's like, oh yeah, I love a blanket as well. So the unicorn was made, but it's also evolved into a blanket. So it's a unicorn blanket as well. Um, we're calling it a unicorn blanket, my niece and I, but obviously there's not much. There's not much unicorn about it, but we thought these would be unicorn-y colours. You know, they kind of had bright, colourful hairs and tails. The unicorn that I made for her had multicoloured mane and tail. So we thought this would go with it quite well. And apparently she's informed her mum now that she's going to have like a whole unicorn crocheted bedroom. So I'm not quite sure what that involves. <laughs> I'm hoping the crochet element is just the blanket. Apparently she wants unicorn curtains as well. Hope she doesn't want crocheted curtains. Fingers crossed people because that kid is persistent so I'll probably have to end up making them if that's what she wants. <laughs> but yeah this is, um, as I say, because it's worsted weight it's it's getting big really quickly so I haven't been, haven't spent a massive amount of time on this and it feels like it's almost done really. I've only got like the last corner to do and then obviously I've got to come up with some kind of some kind of border, which I'm not sure what on earth that will be, really. That will probably be the toughest bit, actually, because I don't know what I'll do for it. Um, possibly something quite plainish, just to sort of edge it. I don't think it needs anything sort of fancy, does it? It wouldn't really go with this. Hmm. To be thought about. <clears throat> um, so that's that that I've done. What do I normally talk about next? Patterns in progress, don't I? Pips. Oh, so news. News on that front. Is about this one. So this is my Toasty Twirls sock. Should put the other one on the blocker. Yes. So the pattern for these is finally out. Woohoo! Um, I popped it on the blog yesterday. So that's up on Ravelry now and you can uh, make those if you should wish to. So it's just um, a nice simple, I guess basically almost a vanilla sock. But it's just got a little feature of cable, and that's on both sides. Running down the sides, just sort of give you something to do and kind of mark off. You know, I like something to just sort of, oh, I'll just do another cable, and you feel like you're getting somewhere when you're just ticking off another little cable or something, or another little repeat of something. Um, yeah, so I just found that made it a little bit of interest for the knit but also look at how well you can see the pretty pretty yarn speckles this is a homespun house yarn in her warm and toasty colourway which I love and adore and hence them being toasty twirls 
the twirls for the cable and the toasty for the colourway. Um, yes, yeah, so just to be 100% clear on the pattern, this line that I put on the top um, of different colour, that isn't actually written in, not that it's hard to do, you just cast on in that colour and then carry on in the main colour, but I haven't actually written that into the pattern per se. So it's probably a bit daft of me to do it, didn't think that through, and also I kind of did this slip stitch along the heel turn and gusset again kind of on autopilot because I've been doing that with my socks lately but I haven't actually written that into the pattern so if you get the pattern it is plain here so I'm going to have to knit these again with a plain bit here and just in one colour just to sort of illustrate what is actually in the pattern I've put a note in the um, in the pattern description on Ravelry I have said that I have noted that so that it is clear exactly what you'll be getting so if you're expecting to be able to learn how to do that I have put that that's not in there I will do another picture just to make it clear because obviously it is a little confusing when you show a picture of a sock and it hasn't got something that's in the pattern so that was me being a bit dim there but never mind I just have to knit another pair but yes, the pattern is out, so that's quite exciting. Oh, look at that little red bit in there. And I can wear these now, although it's summery, so I guess I don't need to. I've got quite a few socks collecting up this year. It's quite pleasing. Um, so that's that one that's out, so that's good. Then the bags. Um, let me get one to show you what I'm talking about. Um, yes, so these are my, well, I don't know what to call them really, stubby sock bags, stocky sock bags is what I've gone for, because they're quite short and stout, you can see when they're sort of round together, where's a hank to compare, yeah, so there's a skein, so you can fit two in it quite nicely, that works okay, but you know, I didn't put a massive amount of height on, but I just like them like that. I think they look cute and they sit open nicely so that you can uh, just knit out of the top, which I like very much. Um, yeah, so I can just sort of carry them around like that and knit my socks out of the top. Primarily I'm thinking socks for these bags, hence the stocky sock. Um, anyway, I've talked about this before, I'm being repetitive again. The point being is that I have the pattern and it is ready to go. So yay for that. Um, I know a couple of you, or some of you, have very kindly said about it and uh, are waiting for it. So it's ready to go. The only thing now is getting it out because obviously it's a sewing pattern. And I normally do knitting and crochet patterns that I put on Ravelry and uh, love knitting. Love knitting or love crochet. Obviously this is a sewing pattern so I need to find somewhere else to put it. So I guess Etsy because where else is the? If you know of anywhere good let me know. But it needs to be somewhere that deals with the VAT because obviously it's a digital download and um, yeah so the VAT is an issue. Um, 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 words. Yeah, so I'm thinking Etsy. So I've had a look at that and I've started getting the my shop set up. Um, but yeah, it's all completely new territory to me, so I'm a bit slightly bamboozling, I'm finding it. I've got to be honest. I'm sure it'll all become clear once I get used to it. But yeah, I just kind of looked at the sort of whole interface for it and went, oh... But that's a lot of things. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going through it and um, I'm just not quite sure how to set it up because it's a PDF. Do you sort of say you've got hundreds of them in stock? But then it also says you can set it up as a recurring thing. So do I just have one in stock and it will automatically recur? That's the bit that kind of confuses me a little bit. But yes, I'm going to look at that again later this week. So hopefully I'll get it up later this week. But um, I'll pop it on the blog or Instagram or whatever if I do. So if that is one you're interested in, then look out for news on that. So hopefully that will be coming very soon. Um, what else have I got patterns-wise? I've got a few things toodling along. I'm working on 
this which will be my pick and mix sock pattern but I'm not I'm not really going to rush on that one because I've just got socks out and I've got a couple of other things I need to do so that's going to toodle along in the background and um, I'm thinking I was going through things the other day and I've got quite a few patterns um, that I did as commissions for magazines which I now have the rights back so I can either sell those or put them up on my blog um, so I was thinking I might try and get some of those out. Maybe I'll do some sort of summer pattern bonanza I was thinking. I've got some sort of little bits and I've got some slightly bigger bits. So some might be free, some might be kind of cheaper patterns. Because some of them haven't got... They're literally just the written pattern. Whereas normally I like to sort of include as much extra as I can. Maybe charts, maybe photo tutorials. And I don't think I'm going to do that for these but I might do them as a sort of special, kind of like a budget buy pattern type thing, which I've thought about doing before, so yeah, that might be worth a go. Um, yeah, so I was just kind of thinking about this the other day, so it's in the early stages yet, but I thought it might be fun to do something like that over summer, maybe I'll do like one a week for a few weeks or something, kind of. Summer pattern bonanza is what I was thinking of, so... Yeah, that might be fun. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about that. Um, yes, yeah, so goodies. Incoming goodies. So I got uh, this month's knit crate in yesterday. So that's all very exciting. Little surprise in the post. So this month's theme is ice cream. This is the colour I got. Bright, bright red. Isn't it a gorgeous red? Looks looks a little more different on here. Looks a slightly paler in real life. Looks even, looks an even better red on the screen than it is in real life, actually. To be completely honest. It feels... They do do a lovely soft yarn, though. Right, so they're calling it Vidalania, would we say? Oh, colourway smacker. <laughs> Great name. Um, softest sock. 75% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 10% cashmere. Uh -huh, hence the softness. Uh, fingering weight yarn, 437 yards to 100 grams. Yeah, so that. Do you know what? I have to say, I really like red. And I opened this, and I like it, but I thought, oh, I'm not sure... I'm not sure really what I'd use it for, but what I'm kind of wishing now is, is that I had that red that you can see on the screen. <laughs> because it's actually even nicer than the red I've got here in the flesh. It's just a little bit paler and slightly more tomato than cherry in the flesh. And it's nice, but this red on the screen is richer. Um, yes, yeah, so they had four colours, I think. There's like a pale blue, which looked quite nice. There was a bright yellow, which actually I kind of liked. Yeah. Kind of like that. There was this red, and there's also a really nice minty green, which is actually my favourite. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I kind of wish I'd got the minty green. But the yellow might have been nice too. Oh well, there you go. So these are the patterns that came with it. This is the knitted one. See, look at that minty green. I love it. Or sort of, I don't know if it's supposed to be an aqua. It looks mint in that picture. That's pretty. And then this is the crochet one. Did I? Sorry, I just. Yeah, you could see the name, could you? Uh, and this is the crochet one. Lemicello. I actually quite like that. I think, do we think that's top? I've only seen this picture so I haven't looked online yet. Looks like it might be a top. I kind of like that. I kind of like it in the yellow as well actually. I'm not sure I see it. The well, red might work I suppose. I might actually make that. Yeah, really nice patterns this time I think. And um, yeah, I like the yarn. I like the colours mostly, I think. 
Now the mint pat the knit pattern is called minty fresh, so I take it it is probably probably a minty colour there. Yeah, so if anyone's got a knit crate and they want they hate mint and they would like red, just saying, might be up for swap. Just putting it out there. Not that I don't like the red, I'm just putting it out there, just in case, you know, like red's your favourite and you hate mint or something. That's all I'm saying. And then my other incoming goodies, um, I'm not sure if I spoke to you about this. So I went to, with Sam again, to see some of my lovely friends, Insta friends, Blogland friends. Um, Chrissy from Chrissy's Crafts and <sighs> Jules from So Sweet Violet, really incapable of remembering anything today. Um, yes, and we got some, we did a little swap for minis, so I got some lovely, lovely minis. Let me show you. Let me click them up. I've got kind of a theme with my minis. We kind of put them all into like a dip thing and sort of just took some out so it was completely random but mine are quite nicely themed I've got kind of pinky and tealy theme going on aren't they pretty? really nice so of course now I want to make something something else scrappy I've still got my Battenberg blanket on the go but technically I've done all the uh, colourful squares, I've already made them, but I'm tempted to put some of these in anyway. <laughs> Look at this one. This one is one of my favourites. Oh, that is so nice. So this is uh, Dandelion and Dogwood, which is Little Taylor S on Instagram. And uh, that's Amy, and that's her Gatsby colourway, which I remember her showing at the time, and I did try and get some, and I didn't. Look how beautiful it is. Oh, so stunning. She does some gorgeous colours. Uh, yeah, some really beautiful ones. And this one as well, just because it's um, Party in a Nebula, which is a great name. Also Spectrum Fiver, which I haven't used before. So yeah, that's quite fun as well. That would make great socks, wouldn't it? So those were lovely. And I also got a little something from Sam, who made us all, well, she gave us a skein each, which was amazingly generous, just on its own. So this one is from Knit Picks, Chroma Twist, Surf's Up. That's a good colour name, isn't it? 70% superwash wool, 30% nylon. That is quite nice, I like that. Make nice socks, and it's got some of that lovely barb polling on. Hmm, interesting. So that's lovely, and she also gave us one of her lovely little bags. Look at that cute rabbit on. And this linen, I'll tell you, this bag, I love this bag. This linen is perfect. It's kind of, can you see how it's all a little bit crinkly and it's just got a really nice like slightly rustic feel about it so you can see how the sort of slightly different thicknesses of thread it just looks beautiful it feels beautiful it's just a lovely little sack and look it's lined all the way in that beautiful I don't know if it's actually Liberty or a very beautiful Liberty or Liberty style fabric. Oh, I love it. I love this very much. I love this linen very much. That would be nice to do some embroidery on, wouldn't it? Oh, I wonder if she'll tell me where she got it from. Mm. <laughs> Idea. Yeah, so I like that very much. And we also got this little gorgeous, oh, you can't see it from there. It is. Let me open it. So this is from Jules from So Sweet Violet as well. And it's a hand balm. Mm. So I have I think she has different shapes of this. And this one is sweet orange, 
and bergamot and balm. Oh, it smells amazing. It feels amazing as well. So I've been very ginger and not using it, but oh, it's lovely. Mmm, that is so nice. <laughs> so the last thing to show you are my pins. So, I got this one and this one I had already from So Sweet Violet. Lovely Mabel and her lovebird. And then when we went for our little meet up and chat, she gave me one of her brand new ones. Which let me try and see if I can get in reasonably close. Whoa! Can't cope with that dark background, can it? Can you see the speckles? It's a yarn rainbow and the clouds aren't speckly yarn balls. It's actually got glitter in it. Oh, it can't cope with that, the dark and the light, can it? I shall put a picture in show notes so you can see. And from Chrissy, we've got the lovely one of her Life is One Big Whip pin. Everyone's got a pin. I need a pin. And then when I came home that very day from that little meetup, what was waiting for me but this cute little doggy pin. A little sausage. So I put it up here next to Mabel so they can play. Um, yeah, and that's from lovely Lynn, who is Stitching Fairy on Etsy. And I think, um, what did she say? She's getting these in her shop, so she just sent me one because she thought of me. So that's really kind. Thank you so much. Yeah, so she's got those in her shop. Um, Stitching Fairy Crafts. I just wanted to check I'd got it right. So Etsy.com slash forward slash shop forward slash. Stitching Fairy Crafts. Thank you, Lynn. That was so generous of you. And thank you to my other friends too for your gorgeous goodies. I love them. I love them so much. Well, I think that's about it from me then. So um, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me right through to the end. And um, I hope you find some time for some lovely, alone, beautiful, peaceful crafting time. Um, in between now and when we next speak I shall certainly try to do the same. Okay, till next time. Bye!